Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from Oxford University Press. It's part of the Oxford Private International Law series of titles and this is Private International Law in English Courts, now in a second edition and it's been written by Professor Adrian Briggs, King's Counsel. Elizabeth uh, and I discussed the book in some detail and she was the lead writer for the review and this is her title for the, um, the review. How does private international law work in English courts post-Brexit? Read the definitive work on the subject now in a new edition for 2023 and that's what this book is about. So let's have a look at the book first. It's a hardback. It's a heavy book too actually. There we go. Hardback there. There's the actual spine of the book. There's nothing on the back itself. Going to the back of the book, so we start in reverse order as it were, you've got the index and just under 900 pages. The index is by page numbering, so it's not too difficult to find things. It's not a particularly big index, but it's good enough for what you need. And then you've got a whole range of, of things. Right at the back is arbitration. But what we're doing, just note actually there are footnotes of course all the way through which you can see there. If we go to the front of the book, it's a heavy book as I say, this is the Oxford uh, series of uh, books, the Oxford Private International Law series, which is listed there, and then you've got the um, details of the front of the book there. Then you've got the blurb from OUP, and you've then got the series editor's preface, preface. and the series editor is Professor Andrew Dickinson from Oxford and Professor Jonathan Harris from London. And it's basically talking about the eight years that have passed between the first and the second editions. Then there's a preface from um, Adrian Briggs, um, which is always worth reading, dated September 2022. I'm recording this a little later in 2023, um, but it's a, an important book. Summary of contents, there are 12 chapters in total, and you start off with the detailed content so you should be able to find things pretty quickly if you go through the the various content sections you can see what they look like there um, then we get to after that we get to um, the the end of the, the content section then you get the table of cases an important area of law of course this um, after the table of cases we get guess what we get table of legislation as it's called. So what we've got here is actually the Acts of Parliament to start with and then you get internet, you've got national legislation, international treaties and um, treaties and agreements and so forth. Um, you've actually got a, a large amount of information so take care when you're going through the table of legislation to see what you're specifically uh, looking for because it's not just a question of the um, the basic uh, parliamentary information, you've got the European Union information as well, because this is of course about international law. Then you get to the, the actual book itself, you can see how it's structured. There's chapter one, introduction, and you've got um, the little footnoting at the bottom, there's quite a lot of footnoting all the way through, um, obviously quite a lot of detail. And of course the key with many of these books is to ignore the footnotes, which is the really heavy detail, and just go through the, the actual main text itself. And of course you can see how it runs through. That starts with the common law, then looks at <coughs> the law itself, um, and runs all the way through there. And you can see that the various num uh, title, uh, titles of the various chapters is non-contractual obligations. So all in all, a very important book, and one I'm delighted to review. So what do we say about the book? Well, is the publication of this new edition, it's the second edition from of, of Private International Law in English Courts from OUP, is part of their um, Private International Law series, as I've said, if nothing if not historic, when you consider that the first edition was published some eight years ago in 2014 how time has gone by because obviously I'm recording this in 2023 uh, and the book appeared um, at the end of 2022. I'm not exactly sure of the dates but we'll get onto those in a minute. Uh, since then of course it's been a time of tremendous change. The world in general and the UK in particular have had to tackle one upheaval after another starting of course with 
the dreaded Brexit, which took place with the vote in 2016, the impact of which was exacerbated, of course, by the dismaying and disruptive effects of Covid. But as is pointed out in the latest edition of this, what is an important and authoritative work of reference is Brexit, which, as expressed in the series editor's preface, confronts us with the necessary task of, quote, resurveying and rebuilding the landscape of the conflict of laws in England and Wales. And in addition, um, that the, the book's erudite author, Professor Adrian Briggs, King's Council, has undertaken what he describes as the role of chief surveyor, painstakingly charting the shoreline to see what the receding tide of European legislation has left behind and seeking to build around it with the materials offered by our own constitutional order, shattered statutes, complex rules of procedure and an ever-growing mass of cases. And he does it very well. Now, he summed up there what some of the problems really are for us as practitioners. You've got this shattered statutes, the problems we've had with the effect. And obviously it's contained in the book, the European Union um, legislation itself. You've got the problems of, of all of those difficulties. Then you've got the continuing complexity of the rules of procedure and the ever-growing mass of cases. And as we, as I get older, I'm just seeing it getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've said before and say again, at some stage you have to stop, wipe everything clean and start all over again. Because the problem with procedures is they really are getting um, to be a bit of a problem. Uh, not just within our own domestic law, but elsewhere too. And of course, I think the only way out of this will be um, the reckoning that will come with the use of information technology. But we're not, not here there, uh, there yet. Now, with these bewildering realities in mind, how does one cope? Or in the words of Briggs, how does it feel to have taken back control? <laughs> Obviously, there is no simple answer out there to this conspicuously complex and by now oft-repeated question. Indeed, and obviously, there is a multiplicity of answers to a multiplicity of questions linked to the complexities of this issue. And it obviously it's controversial. We don't know the answers to a lot of this, but we can at least watch and see where we're going. And we've got books like this, which do help us immensely. And I thank OUP for producing them. What this book does is to provide practitioners with the insights the guidance and the techniques needed to function successfully within the new landscape of international law. And this new edition, says the author, aims to show and explain how private international law works in English courts, using the jurisprudence to help to paint rather than to overwhelm the picture. And he succeeds with it, of course, uh, and we're very pleased about this. Certainly, this distinguished text is what, I, is what it is, delivers plain speaking, thought-provoking and practical content. It's copiously footnoted throughout and it features logical aids to navigation, including a detailed table of uh, contents, plus a summary of, of the contents as well, and a 14-page index at the back. It's got 12 chapters, as I've indicated, covering every pertinent aspect of what an intrinsically complex area of law it is, including the following tools and techniques, jurisdiction and salary measures, foreign judgments, contractual obligations, non-contractual obligations, property, corporations, adults, children, and finally, arbitration right at the end. And it's also important to bear in mind that in the, there are more than 40 pages of cases and of legislation right at the front. So practitioners in, uh, practitioners in international law everywhere will no doubt regard this book as an essential purchase. And I should add that the date of publication of this second hardback edition, this one here, is cited as at the 25th of September 2022. And the law is stated as at the 22nd of September 2022, which was the author's 66th birthday. Happy birthday, Professor um, Briggs. And with that, let's just have one quick look at the book again for the birthday boy. There we go.
that there's the spine just opening it in the middle it's a heavy as I said it's a very heavy book I do like the footnoting because the footnoting does actually help but what you what you have got is um, you've got non-contractual obligations chapter 7 you can see how it's structured again um, there, there are lots of subheads but there is no paragraph numbering but all in all it's a very good book and an important area of uh, private international law as it affects the English courts. So thank you to everybody uh, involved in this publication and let's hope it's not too long before there's a new one out and we may be seeing a different landscape in the future for the way that we deal with procedures. You never know. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.